Hi, I'm Dr. Rashmi Yogesh, Consultant Fertility Expert at Kushi Fertility and IVF Center, Bangalore. Egg freezing or oocyte vitrification involves freezing of oocytes in women who are desirous of preserving their fertility, especially when due to medical or non-medical reasons, there is a need to delay their pregnancy or even marriage. This is a very viable and a time-tested option where oocytes can be cryopreserved even up to 10 years. The procedure for the oocyte vitrification or the egg freezing program is similar to that of IVF till the day of oocyte retrieval or ovum pickup. It is advisable for women to think about oocyte vitrification before the age of 35 as the oocytes are much more healthier and there is a high chance of our survival, especially before the age of 35. Here, the procedure starts from the second or third day of the menstrual cycle. The lady has to visit the fertility center on the second or third day of her menstrual cycle, preferably with a blood test report of AMH. AMH is a blood test which tells us about the ovarian reserve and tells us if one cycle of ovum pickup is good enough or a lady has to go through a couple of cycles. It is advisable to freeze at least A2 sites to increase the chances of pregnancy when a lady wants to use it. That's because despite the most advanced technique of vitrification, still the thaw survival rate, I mean once the oocytes are thawed, not all of them survive. The thaw survival rate is usually between 80 to 90 percent and there is a chance that one can lose a few oocytes upon thawing. Therefore, one should look at retrieving or preserving at least eight oocytes to get a considerable chance for pregnancy. This chance of getting seven to eight oocytes is better when the ovarian reserve or the AMH is good and this is possible in a single cycle of ovum pickup. In women who have reduced ovarian reserve, one or two cycles can be done. It's not that it is eight or seven and these are not magic numbers, but however, at least a few eggs, I mean, at least more than four should be the figure in mind. Coming back to the procedure, from the second day of the menstrual cycle, after the pelvic scan is done to understand the number of follicles and after the doctor has ensured that there's no retention cyst from the previous cycle, and the uterine lining has become thin and the lady is definitely into the menstrual cycle, it's only then that the IVF injections are prescribed. The dosage will depend on the age, the weight and also the AMH level. These injections are given for about 8 to 12 days. The injections have to be taken at a fixed time interval on a daily basis. There would be follicular scans or vaginal scans done every three days to understand if the follicular growth is correct and sometimes there is a need to adjust the dosage or add extra injections depending on the response. Once all the follicles are or most of the follicles are more than 16 to 17 mm and once three to four follicles are with a mean diameter of about 18-19 millimeters the trigger shot, which is nothing but an injection to ensure that the oocytes become mature is given. After this trigger shot, 34 to 36 hours after the trigger shot, the ovum pickup procedure happens. The ovum pickup procedure happens transvaginally. A total intravenous anesthesia is administered for this and the procedure would take about 10 to 20 minutes maximum depending on the number of follicles and the accessibility of the ovaries transvaginally. After the ovum pickup procedure is done, the lady is required to stay under observation for about two to three hours, after which there could be mild crampy pain in the lower abdomen for a day or two. The lady goes home and takes rest for a day or two till the crampy pain subsides and then she can get back to all her daily physical activities and routine. However, we advise women not to exercise vigorously, run, jump or do anything that can hurt her lower abdomen because very rarely though 
Some women can have something called as torsion of the ovaries where the ovaries can twist due to excessive physical activity and that's why we advise women not to be physically active and also to avoid intercourse till the onset of the menstruation which takes about 10 days after the ovum pickup procedure. When the lady decides to use her oocytes this is usually after a lady gets married she is advised to come back to the doctor on the second or third or the fourth day of the menstrual cycle a follicular scan or a vaginal scan is done and after ensuring that there's no cyst and the lining is thin she is administered estrogen tablets these are estradiol valerate tablets which are given orally the lady takes these tablets for about 10 days and after 10 days a repeat scan is done to understand if the womb lining has developed once the womb lining is developed the next day the lady is asked to take a progesterone blood test to be sure that there's no follicle that's growing and then the same day the oocytes are thawed and the husband is asked to provide his semen sample in the lab after the oocytes are thawed every survived oocyte is injected with one sperm and the procedure of ICSI is performed after the procedure of ICSI is performed the embryos are kept for growth in the incubators in the IVF lab for about 3 or 5 days after which the embryos that are growing best are replaced into the lady's uterus and the surplus embryos are cryopreserved back the lady is given some progesterone pessaries or injections for the support of the second phase of the menstrual cycle this is what is called as a luteal phase and then she is advised to take rest for a couple of days post embryo transfer however one should not refrain from routine work and it is not required to take complete bed rest post embryo transfer after about 2 weeks of the embryo transfer a urine pregnancy test or a blood test is done to understand if the lady is pregnant this is what is oocyte freezing and this is what is icsi after oocyte freezing once a lady preserves her oocytes it's imperative for the lady to understand that if these oocytes have to be used it has to be used for the ivf or icsi procedure for childbearing